Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, we're going to keep building our Mario Run game. Now in the last video, we showed you how to add player movement to our main character. This included a forward run, a jump, and gravity. In this video, we want to make it so that our camera follows our main character at all times. Right now, since we don't have a camera follow script, our main character will actually end up running off the end of the screen, which is really bad. We don't want that because we want our players to be able to see what our main character is doing at all times. If we don't have a camera follow script and he runs off the end of the screen, he could fall in a hole or he could even just be running constantly up against a wall and we wouldn't even know. So we want to fix that. And let's get started. So here you can see our project is open in Unity and from our last video, we were able to create a capsule object for our main character and a cube object that we've stretched out to be the ground. Now these are just placeholder objects and we'll eventually replace these objects with awesome models once we get cool models for whatever game we want to build. Well, let's go ahead and hit play and we'll show you what the script does from the last video. So when I hit play, you can see that our capsule falls with gravity and once he hits the ground, he starts running. But as you can see, he ran off the end of the screen and we have to end up looking in the scene view to see what the capsule is doing. And he fell off the end of the ground, which is really bad. And so we're going to fix that, but we were also able to add a jump feature to our game. And this jump feature is variable, which means that depending on how long I click the mouse, our character will jump to different heights, which is awesome, which is also included in pretty much every Mario game. But with the last video, there was something that we needed to fix. Now, I didn't realize this, but even though we're not using a rigid body in physics, we actually need to put these functions that we created for our player controller into the fixed update function. Now, I think it's because we're basically replicating physics and a lot of the things deal with time dot delta time. And it was really weird because when I had this project open on a different computer, an older computer, it, it worked fine. There was nothing wrong with it. I could just leave these functions in a regular update function and it ran perfectly. But when I brought it over to our newer, nicer computer, for some reason it was messing up. And I think it was because the the hertz on our, C, on our processor or graphics card, whichever one, it was actually too high and it was messing up the math for some reason. It was really weird. But, and that might not be the actual reason, I'm just speculating. But once I put it in a fixed update function, it, it worked. It fixed the problem and it was able to run on this computer and our older computer. So I think it's because we're essentially replicating physics. Now, whenever you use like add force for a rigid body, you're gonna wanna put that in a fixed update function. But as well, I think anytime that you're replicating physics, you want to put it in a fixed update function. And that's a, that's just really simple. You just add cap, uh, fixed with the capital F on the front of your update function, and it becomes a fixed update function. So pretty cool, easy fix. And now let's get started with our camera follow script. So I'm going to go back to Unity, and let's create a new script to be our camera follow script. So I'm going to click Create. C sharp script and let's call this camera follow. Now let's go ahead and open it in Visual Studios. Once you have it open in Visual Studios, there's going to be a couple variables that we're going to need to add at the top. The first one is going to be a public game object and this is going to hold our player. And then we're going to need a float, a couple float variables. So let's do um, private float. This is going to be delta x. And then we need a private 
float. This is going to be our camera, let's say camera Y and then public or private, private float. And this is going to be our camera Z. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do once we've created these variables is set our delta X and our camera Y and camera Z variables to their initial values. Since they're private, we can't set them in the inspector. And so we have to set them in Visual Studios. So the first one, delta X, we're going to say delta X. And we have to think, what it, what do we want delta X to be? We want it to actually be the distance from our camera um, and our main character in the X direction. We want to have it be the value of the distance between them. And so I'm going to do delta X equals, and then we need math F to get the absolute value. So math F dot, and then A, B, S is for absolute value. Then this is a function, so we need parentheses, and then we're going to pass in a float value. And the float value is going to be our player dot transform dot x no position dot x minus our camera no our transform since this script is going on our camera then we can just call the transform we don't need to call main camera or whatever so transform dot position dot x awesome now we're going to set our camera y value and this is just going to be camera y equals transform dot position dot y. And then camera z, camera z is going to be equal to transform dot position dot z. And the reason why we want to get these is because we're actually going to be changing the position of our camera pretty much like every frame and so we need the value of these but we don't want to have to get the value every time and that, this makes it so that we can actually modify these values and it will modify the position of our camera so let's think about how we're going to modify our camera's position so that it's always following our main character so our main character is going to be running at a constant speed in the x direction and so we want to first modify the camera's X position. And we need to not just set it to the main character's position because then it wouldn't have an offset. And we got the delta X value so that we knew what that offset is. And so let's create a new function. And this is going to be a void. And let's call this set camera position parentheses, curly braces. Inside this, this is where we're going to be setting the X, the Y, and the Z values of our camera, camera's position. And so to do this, let's call transform.position, and we need to set it equal to a vector 3. Uh, we need new vector 3. And then parentheses, and this is going to require uh, three parameters. So the first parameter is for the X position. Now, in order to set the camera's X position, we need to know what the main player's or the main character's X position is, is because the main character's X position depend, uh, determines where we put the camera. And so to get the player's X position, we're going to call our player variable and then dot transform dot position dot x and then we want to add the offset which is the delta x variable that we created so plus and then we call the delta x not delegate delta x the next parameter is the y position that we want our camera to be and this is just our camera y value 
And so since we're not modifying the Y position of our camera yet, it's just going to be a constant value, which is what we got with our camera Y variable. So camera Y. The next variable is our Z position, and this is going to be a constant value as well. So camera Z, and then we end it with the semicolon. Let's go ahead and save this and go back to Unity. Now we need to apply this script to our main camera. So I'm going to select my main camera in the hierarchy and then click on our camera follow script and drag it into the inspector. And now what we need to do is set the value of our player variable. And that is our player game object. So in the hierarchy, I'm going to select player, drag it into the player variable field. Now let's go ahead and hit play and see what this does. So our player falls. Once he hits the ground, he is not doing it. And the reason why, once again, I forgot to call this function in update. So in the update function, we say set camera position parentheses semicolon. Let's get back to it. OK, now it's going to work. So I hit play. Camera falls or player falls. Once he hits the ground, you can see that it doesn't look like he's moving right now in our game scene. But if you look at our scene view, he's definitely moving and the camera's moving. So that is awesome. We got the, there it is, the end of the ground and he falls off the screen. Now our camera's not following him in the Y direction, but he is following him in, in the X direction. So that's awesome. Let's go back to our script so that we can add the Y value. So to do this, all we need to do is modify the camera Y value. And so let's create a new function in which we can modify that value. So this is going to be Y follow. So void, and then the function I'm calling Y follow. Parentheses, curly braces. Now there's a number of ways that you could probably get the camera to follow your main character in the Y direction. And it's really dependent on how you want the camera to behave when following your main character. So you could maybe do it dependent on the velocity of your main character, depending on if he's falling. Maybe you want the camera to move in front of the player so that you can see what's coming before you hit, it, hit the ground. Or you could maybe even have it move above the player so that you can see where he's jumping. Uh, that's one option. The, the method that we're going to use in order to get the camera to follow our main character in the Y direction is actually through a buffer zone. We're going to create a buffer zone in the Y direction where if our player is inside that buffer zone, the camera doesn't move. But as soon as the player starts leaving that buffer zone, it repositions itself in the correct place. So to do this, we actually need to add one more variable up at the top of our script. This is going to be a public float, and this is going to be delta, delta y. Now inside our yfollow function, we need to create a few if statements. So the first one is going to be if, and then we want the player's transform, so player.transform.position, and then we want the Y position is less than the transform of our camera or the position of our camera. So transform dot position dot Y. So we're measuring to see if our player is less than the camera's Y position. But we don't want it to just be the camera's Y position. We want it to be uh, the buffer zone underneath the camera. And so to do this, we're going to subtract from our camera's Y position, the delta Y value. And if this is true, so if the player is below that buffer zone, then we want to reposition our camera. And to do this, since we're already setting our camera in our set camera, position function, we just have to change the camera Y variable. So camera Y equals the player's 
transform player dot transform dot position dot y plus the buffer. Okay, so real quick, if the player falls below the camera's buffer zone, then we want to reposition the camera only to the player's position plus the buffer zone. And so that it'll kind of do this like reposition, reposition, all dependent on the player's position. But we don't want to set it to the player's position. We want to set it to the player's position plus the buffer so that the player will, in the next frame, fall outside the buffer. Once he's outside the buffer, the camera will then reposition and it'll go on and on and on and on until the player hits the ground. Then the camera will reposition and he'll no longer be falling outside that buffer. And so he will, the camera will, will then stop repositioning itself and he is then free to move within that buffer. And so all we have to do now is do the opposite. So if he goes above that buffer, and so to do this, let's just copy this same if statement and then change a few things. So we want to first change the less than sign to a greater than sign. So player.transform.position.y is greater than transform.position.y. So this is the camera's transform.position.y minus, except for we don't want minus, we want plus the buffer. So camera's position plus the buffer. And then we want to set camera y equal to player.transform.position.y minus delta y. And so it's doing the exact same thing as the first if statement, but the opposite. So if the player goes above the buffer, then the camera repositions itself uh, delta y below the player. And it'll keep doing that until the player is no longer going above the buffer, but falls within the buffer. And what we want to do is make sure that we also add an else statement, an else if in front of the if. So else if, and then our if statement. Awesome, let's go ahead and then make sure that we call this function in our update. And we want to call it before our set camera position. So y follow parentheses semicolon. Now let's save this and go back to Unity. So the only new variable that we have now is the delta y variable. And we want to make sure that we set this to a good distance between the player and the camera that we want it to be. We don't want that distance to be so big that our player has to then go off the screen in order to reach outside that buffer for the camera to reposition itself because that would be defeating the purpose. And so I think a good size would probably be two, maybe three. And now let's go ahead and hit play and see how it works. So he, you can see that he fell and once he goes off the end of the, of the screen, he falls with the camera or the camera falls with the player. Now let's show you one more time. So he falls and I if I click, he actually moves up. So that's pretty cool. But if I do a small jump, he doesn't move up. It's only when I do a big jump and then he's still our camera is still following our player even after he falls off the end of the screen. So that's everything that we're going to cover in this video. Thank you so much for staying to the end and following along. If there was anything that was confusing or hard to understand in this video, make sure that you leave your questions in the comments below and we'll get right back to you. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't because we're going to keep building Mario Run and you need to stay tuned for all our future videos. We'll see you next time. Bye.